Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in this video, we're going to talk about the new kind of application functionality and more specific, the application designer. So there's been a lot made of the Dynamics 365 navigation modifications and really the fact that everything is more modular now. So you'll have a, a module for you know, field service, you'll have a module for customer service, you'll have a module for, you know, any other kind of you know, scenarios that you might bring in operations. You may even have custom modules that you want to work with. And that's really what I wanted to kind of focus on this video is how does the app designer work? What are some of the, the key elements that make up concepts around how that works? Now, there's really two parts. There's the designer itself, and then there's the sitemap designer. Now, from a time perspective, we'll talk about the sitemap designer in another video, but we'll at least mention some of the, the key components and, and let you understand kind of how all this fits together when you think about it from kind of a grand scheme of things. So as always, the easiest way to look at this is to really just kind of go into the application and consume it. So what am I talking about when I talk about modular applications or the, or the apps module? I'm talking about this area over here. So when you go into your kind of Dynamics 365 menu, you'll see all the available apps that you have. And realistically, all the apps are just a subset of different components inside the application that have been categorized or grouped together based upon a specific functionality. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can access it. First and foremost, if you go into your home screen, your home screen is going to give you all of the different apps that you have access to based upon your individual elements. So you'll see all the different apps that you work with. Now, when you come into this, you might see multiple different apps uh, for the same thing. And that's really based upon all the different organization environments that you have. So what you'll see right now from, from my home screen scenario is, you know, I have um, a, a dev environment, I have a production environment. And so I have different navigation elements that are specifically associated with each environment. And it tells you directly on that modulized app, which specific environment that app is associated with. So if you go out and you download, you know, field service, or if you have project service automation, or if you're deploying operations, you will see a different modulized option for each one of those individual elements that you're working with. Now you can also do it just through the application itself. Like if I wanted to, I could go into the application itself. I could go into whichever specific organization I wanted to work with. And then when I navigate to that element, now it's going to give me my standardized kind of app switcher that I can use to switch between the individualized apps that I'm working with. Now, every app is going to have or every Dynamics 365 organization is going to have kind of a default app or, or a custom app for their entire organization. And that's really going to be what you would think of in the in the standardized setting of Dynamics 365 or CRM in the past. This is really just going to be all of the components that you would have inside the application. So if you have multiple solutions inside, you will see each one of those, uh, those elements inside the application navigation. Now, by default, it typically is going to come in with the name custom. Custom. And that's really just telling you that this is a custom tweaked environment for your perspective. Now you do have some options around that custom environment. If I go into settings and I go into administration, one of the areas I'll see is under system settings. And if I scroll down underneath system settings, I will actually see set options for default app in Dynamics 365. This is where I can determine whether or not I want to use kind of the modularized version of the application. So do I want to show the default app on the landing page inside and inside app switcher so I can actually navigate to it? And if it has a different name of perspective or something like, you know, custom app or something like that, this is where I could come in here. I could change the name to whatever I want. And then when I refresh the application, that'll refresh the modularized applications. And then I will see the information with my updated items inside there. So what's nice about this is it gives you a little bit more flexibility, obviously, to define how you want to access this information. So now I've got that renamed based upon my, my items. Now, if I were to go into settings, I will see an option underneath settings called my apps. And this is going to show me the different apps that I have access to. Now they'll show you in a few different scenarios. There's the published apps. So the apps that are kind of live out there that people have access to. And then there's the apps that are being edited. And these would be the apps that I would have the capabilities to go in and start modifying and tweak to fit my specific needs. Now, each one of these apps will have 
some menu options associated with them. So as I go into these individualized apps, I've got a couple of different options. The first option that I see here is I can open them up in App Designer. So if I want to go in and physically make design element changes, I can do that from within App Designer. The other option is I can go in and I can manage roles. So when we're talking about managing roles, what we're doing here is we're assigning different security roles to each one of these apps. So now you're limiting access to who has the ability to see these apps inside the application based upon their security role. Now, it's real important that the security role doesn't necessarily dictate what items inside that particular application that I have access to. So you're still using your standard subset of Dynamics 365 security roles to control who has access to you know, accounts, contacts, opportunities. That's still going to be there. So just because something might be a part of that app and I have a security role that has access to that app, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to have access to everything inside that app because, again, I may have different physical entities in that item tied down based upon security role. But once that application has been created, if I want to limit who has access to those individual or to that app, this is where I can do this just by strictly assigning a security role to that particular option. And then that will now no longer show up for those people inside the organization. Now, the other option that I have is to obviously physically go in and edit the app. So if I go in to open an app designer, this is going to open up my new interface, which is going to allow me to start modifying this application to fit my specific needs. Now, there's a few different elements or components that are going to make up the actual apps themselves. The first and foremost is the sitemap. Now, again, we're not necessarily going to get into the sitemap editor in a lot of detail in this video. We'll talk about that in another video. But the sitemap, every single app that you design has to have a sitemap or a valid sitemap configuration associated with it. And you can design or tweak the sitemap based upon whichever specific app you want to work with. So there will be individualized sitemaps for each item. Now from within there, you also have the capabilities based upon the app itself to go in and add dashboard components business process flows, and then your entity-based information, which is typically going to be things like your forms, your views, and your charts. So you have the ability to determine what specific elements are going to show up inside that app. Now, you'll notice a lot of similarities when you look at the app designer to, you know, from an interface perspective to like the business process flow designer or the business rule designer. It's going to have this whole concept of components and properties. And so they've broken them down into a few different scenarios. They've broken them down into artifacts, which are going to be mainly your entities, your dashboards, and your business process flows. And then they've broken them down into entity assets. So for each entity that is a part of this solution, what specific forms, views, and charts do I want to expose as part of this particular solution? So for example, if I click on dashboards, Dashboards is going to open up kind of my components area for dashboards. And this is where I now have the ability to see what specific dashboards are associated with this particular application. So obviously this is the customer service application. So I'm going to see more of my customer service based dashboards that are going to be associated with this. As I add individual elements or as I add individual components to these items, then it will start looking at some of the other aspects of this and I can start bringing in additional items that might be beneficial to those items based upon what I'm working with. So this is where I can start bringing in additional items. Now, a lot of the things like the dashboards and the business process flows, as you start adding those to this particular item, it will recognize what components or what entities need to be a part of that and it will start to add those items in. So again, it's much more a scenario where you just kind of pick and choose what specific options you want based upon that specific element. Now, the other thing is, as I look at, like, for example, the account entity, you'll notice here that it says all. The default when you bring a component into an application, so for example, if I bring account into the application, the default is to include everything, to include all the forms, to include all the views, to include all the charts. If I want to start limiting that specific information, this is where I just start checking specific items, and now you'll notice that 
by selecting the account form, now I've limited the number of forms that I have. If I just come in and I unselect that, then it's going to go ahead and it's going to default that back to everything. And that's important to note when you start looking at the, the individualized items that you're going through. Now, the other thing that you'll see within here is if I go into properties, this is where I can start customizing what I want to call the app. So if I want to call it customer service or, you know, whatever that situation is, this is where I can start defining URLs that are going to be associated with it. This is where I can start defining individualized uh, logos and images that are going to be associated with it as well. Now, you have to remember that these are components. So if I start bringing these individual components into the application, it's much like if I was going to do it from a solution perspective. If I have a form that has a lookup to another entity, there's going to be dependencies within those situations. And the, the application does do a, a fairly good job of telling you, you know, particularly when you try to validate it, if you have any errors inside your, your, your application. So when you hit validate, it'll tell you if you have dependencies with other items that are not included in this application module. And if they are, then you have to go ahead and add those items in. Now be careful with that because one of the things I noticed is you, you get a, you can potentially get into the same problem here that we get into with solutions all of a sudden you know it tells you you have a dependency on this you start adding these individual things in and before you know it you've got the entire infrastructure of your organization inside your application. So there's two types of, of errors or items that you're going to get. You're going to get a flat out error, which tells you there's a dependency on an item that is not existent in, in this particular scenario that you need to make it function. And then there's a warning that tells you, you know, there's the dependency on this component, um, but it's not necessarily going to affect situations. You can publish a application with warnings, you cannot publish it with specific errors. So what you're basically doing in here is building the interface on how you want people to be able to work through it. Now, again, as part of this, each one of these individualized situations will also have a sitemap. And so the next piece to this is as you're building this application and you're defining, okay, here's the entities and here's the dashboards and here's the elements that are going to be presented inside that situation, you do need to go in and modify the sitemap to fit those. And we'll talk a little bit more about the sitemap, in, like I said, in another video. Now, before I end this, I want to talk just about a couple of other kind of key aspects to this. So I'm just going to close App Designer here for just a sec. And I'm going to go into settings and I'm going to go into customizations. And I'm going to just create a new solution. So one of the things that you will now see as part of solution is you will see an apps option. So this is where you can add specific apps into your solution. So if I had made some changes to, you know, what entities or what components are inside this application, I could go ahead and create this app, add it as part of my solution. And then when I package and send the solution off and distribute the solution, I'll have this app inside it. Now, the thing to remember is when I add a application to a solution, I'm not necessarily adding the components. So it's just like anything. If I create a custom entity, that custom entity is in that application and I add that application to a solution. When I go ahead and I go distribute the solution and export it out, if that entity is not in there, I'm going to have errors when it goes through and tries to import it into the environment. So you're still going to have to rely on some of the key elements that you're used to thinking about from an application perspective in regards to adding required components to make sure that you have the additional components that would be a part of this as part uh, included in the solution. But using the application module, now I could go ahead and I could design from scratch kind of a hybrid. I could have a custom hybrid of any of those different situations. And then using the permissions, I would be able to control who has specific access to it. And so what I would recommend is just going out, creating a couple of different apps, adding some different dashboards and adding some different business process flows and watch how the entities kind of populate themselves inside there 
there and then go into some of those entities and then start you know adding some different forms removing some different things so you can really see from a design element that's what you know how that whole concept works but when you start thinking about the entire shift to more of a modular based situation this really is a powerful tool that opens up a variety of different options and like i said in the in the in a future video we'll take you into the sitemap editor and show you how that's all going to constitute and kind of tie together as part of that information as well so that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed our look into the new application modules and the new application designer that's available as part of Dynamics 365. Again, I think if you just play with it, you'll find there's a lot of cool things. Again, it's still kind of in its infancy stages, so there's a few little quirks that you have to kind of look at when you're going through, but you'll you'll pick those up pretty quickly. Mainly it's around the dependencies and some of those things, but it's still a nice opportunity to get started and start building some of the modularized apps from there. So again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thanks for watching everybody take care and have a good one